Hello and welcome to Murphy's Garden and this is the sixth video in our series of planting trees. These are all ornamental trees that we're planting in this part of the garden. If you're interested in what plants we've chosen and how we went about the process of choosing them, have a look at the video that we did on that. And we've been doing a video a week on each of the trees, just finding out as much as we possibly can on each tree. And the sixth one is this one. This is Eunonymus Europius Red Cascade, actually more of a large shrub to a small tree. So we'll get on and plant this one and look at some of the details on this particular plant. Eunonymus Europius is native and found growing in European hedgerows. The wood was traditionally used for making spindles, hence its common name, spindle tree. This Eunonymus Red Cascade is an improved form of our native spindle tree and well deserving of a place in any garden. It is an RHS AGM awarded plant for good reasons that we'll come on to, but first let's prepare this tree for planting. We begin by tipping the tree out of the pot and examining the root ball. If we look for the root collar, we see that there are a lot of roots encircling the trunk, so it's really important to remove these by teasing them out and encouraging them to go in an outward direction to prevent girthing. We've talked a lot about girthing in other videos, but just a quick recap for anyone watching this video in isolation. Girthing is where the root encircles the trunk of the tree, causing it to strangle the tree by cutting off water and nutrient supply to the tree. This can be a problem in trees that are planted a bit too deeply. And you can see with this tree that the soil has got too deep and is covering the tree collar. This is the point at which the trunk meets the roots and it's also known as the flare, as this is where the roots kind of flare out. So just by removing that, you can expose the, um, the root flare, which is much, much better. It's important to know that the cells in the trunks of most trees cannot cope with moisture in the same way that root cells can. And planting too deeply can cause the trunk to rot off and may be the cause of a tree's demise. This isn't the case in some trees. Things like willows, of course, do love having their, their feet in moisture, so that's not a problem. But for majority of trees, um, planting too deeply can be a problem. So I know I do keep repeating this point, um, which we've talked about in all of the tree videos, but it's just worth a recap for anyone watching this video. So when you find the um, root flare, just remember to plant it slightly above the soil level to avoid any problems. So we can see quite clearly here, what Alistair's done is just to expose the area where we need to plant to. We can see the, the height at which it needs to be planted and he's just untangling some of these roots and you can see that, that this plant has been very pot bound and the roots are starting to sort of encircle the, the pot so they go round and round and round and go in a kind of spiral shape and they'll continue to do that if you just plant it like, like it is now but just by teasing out the roots, it just encourages the roots to go out and seek moisture from the soil around and nutrients from the soil around. So just, just gently teasing them out, breaking them up a little bit. It doesn't matter if some of them get broken, but definitely just to um, get rid of this very congested kind of matted um, root format. So this really just get the hands in and just tease out these roots is really important. So next, Al's just digging the hole, and it's a good idea to do a square hole, um, again, for reasons that we've just said, just to encourage the roots to go out. Um, and once the roots go out, then the, the tree obviously establishes much quicker and it goes into the existing soil. So we dig out the hole about um, twice as wide and roughly about the same depth as the um, pot. We might go a little bit deeper just so we can add a little bit of extra homemade garden compost. But you do really want it to encourage the tree to grow in the soil that you've got. So not providing too much sort of different soil because you want it to to go out and grow in the soil that you're, you, you've got in your garden. And that said, you can see that the soil that Alistair is pulling out of this hole is incredibly sandy. We know this part of the garden to be very sandy and all of the trees we've chosen do well in sandy soil. Um, they all want um, the soil to be free draining and this one does too. They don't want to be sitting around in wet, um, sodden soil. So we definitely haven't got that problem as many of you may have if you've got clay soil. So if you've got clay soil, it might be a good idea to add some grit. But in our case, we're adding some organic matter just because you can see that our soil is quite depleted of any um, living, you know, living organisms. So putting a bit of homemade compost, I think, is quite a good idea in the case of our, for our trees. 
So I'm just going to put the tree into the hole just to see what that's like and see if that's roughly the right height, which I think it is. And the the root ball is quite dry, so I'm just going to add a little bit of water um, just to moisten the roots because I'm going to add mycorrhizal fungi and I want that to um, stick to the roots so it just feels a little bit dry. So I'm just going to add a little bit of moisture for that reason. So next I'm going to sprinkle on the mycorrhizal fungi. So a tree in the ground will naturally form a network of mycorrhizal fungi. Um, but by adding it at the time of planting, this will speed up the process. And it will mean that it will help a new tree to establish far quicker. And it will also make it much more able to cope with periods of drought or any stress it may encounter by, act, by sort of acting like extensions to the root system. So next we'll fill in the hole with some of the um, compost and also some of the existing soil that we removed from the hole and then once that's done we just need to heal it in and we will be providing a stake uh, on this tree just to avoid any root rock in high winds and also we put a little irrigation pipe in in the tree as well just so that we can get moisture right down to the roots if we get, if we get a dry spring or summer and while we just carry on doing all of that. I think I've just fallen on top of Alistair. But while we carry on doing that, um, I will just tell you a little bit more about this plant. Unonymous Europaeus Red Cascade provides a colourful show throughout the year. Small, relatively insignificant yellow flowers lead on to bright pinky red ornamental fruits that peel apart dramatically to reveal these gorgeous orange pink winged fruits which remain long after the leaves have fallen and if this isn't enough this plant really comes into its own in autumn and winter when its dark green leaves turn blazing scarlet in the autumn so plant it somewhere where its vibrant display can be appreciated and the colour looks at its most magnificent if it's planted in full sun. It makes a really great feature in a winter garden. We saw it used brilliantly to good effect when we visited RHS Garden Rosemore in Devon. So we'll go and have a look at the footage from that um, because it was lovely to see how they were growing it, what they were planting it with, because the planting combinations were quite inspirational, lots and lots of good ideas. So we'll go back to November and visit Rosemore. So here we've got um, Salix, Golden Ness, Unonymous Europius Red Cascade, then the yellow plant is um, Cornus Sanguinea Magic Flame. And here's a picture with the names of all the plants that we can see from this viewpoint and they work so well together so you could literally just copy and paste this into your own garden, it looks fantastic. Particularly love this Cornus, this yellow Cornus, I would really like one of these. And it looks good here next to the spindle tree. And I think you'll agree, it looks great next to Cornus Sanguinea Magic Flame. Absolutely loved it. So that day I did buy one of these plants from Rosemore and it will always remind me of our lovely trip to Devon. So a few weeks has gone by since we planted um, this tree or really it's a large shrub. And it's interesting to see that it is all budded. So we're now um, sort of getting into middle of February and it's got lots of buds on it, which is lovely. And here I've got the Cornus Sanguinea Magic Flame that we saw at Rosemore. This is the one I bought. And you can see these beautiful fiery stems. They're absolutely lovely. They're orange with kind of red tints at the top. So that looks lovely. Uh, incidentally, if you have got Cornus, this is the time to prune it hard if it's a mature we won't obviously do it on this one because it's just a young plant but if you've got a mature clump of cornice cut it right to the ground we have done it on our midwinter fire which i will just show you and um, cut it right to the ground and then that will ensure the new growth comes through and you'll get the lovely colored stems next next winter so do that now and when you do cut the stems back there are a few things you can do with the stems one is to use them to make wreaths, the base of wreaths, which you can decorate the flowers. I've just done this little one for Valentine's Day. And then the other thing to do with it, if you want more plants, is simply just to cut it up, making sure you put the stems the right way and stick them into some soil. And they root very, very easily. You can put them into a pot, but I'm, I've just done it directly into the soil where I want them to grow. And they, they do um, produce roots very, very easily. So worth having a go and um, just struggling to do this a little bit because I'm holding the camera but you get the gist so just stick them into the soil. This is a yellow stemmed dogwood so this will look lovely. I thought it would look nice next to the Circus canadensis forest pansy, a nice contrast to the dark purple leaves. 
So going back to this plant, it will reach maturity in 20 years and it will get to a height of about three metres um, and width wise it gets to about two and a half metres. It's a very unfussy plant. It can tolerate any soil type um, and tolerates chalk, which lots of plants don't, but this is fine with chalk. Um, it does prefer free draining soil, so it doesn't like waterlogged soil. So again, if you're on clay, just remember to add perhaps a little bit of grit. Um, and what else? It can tolerate an exposed or sheltered site, north, south, east or west, really unfussy. Full sun or it can tolerate part shade. I have read that if you're in a very hot part of the world, um, perhaps full sun all day, kind of eight hours plus, um, can perhaps be a bit much and the leaves can go a bit brown but here in Britain in a cooler climate it tolerates full sun very very well in fact the colour of the leaf is improved by having it in full sun um, but if as I say if you're in a hotter part of the world then maybe kind of topping out about six hours of sunshine a day is probably ideal. USDA hardiness four through seven hardiness H6 pruning group one so just prune out doesn't need much pruning just prune out diseased damaged or crossing branches and after you've done any pruning then it's a good idea just to mulch the tree and a good idea to do that annually um, just to suppress the weeds and just give it a little bit of um, a feed every year. So I think that's everything about this um, plant. So if you haven't got one and you're interested and I think it's a good one to have, it's got lovely colour and a, another one, all of these trees, I think even just doing the video just reiterates that how much they've got to offer at all times of the year and and seeing this tree, looking at the lovely bark, it just looks beautiful. So um, we have managed to, we have put the stake in since that video and also the water pipe is in as well. So we can keep this well watered um, throughout the summer. So that's it for this tree. Um, that's number six of our trees. And next week um, we'll be planting the Amylankia um, Robin Hill. So that's another one. And we're getting to the end of the tree planting but what I will be doing, I want to plant all these. I've got lots of shrubs and smaller plants and things that I will be putting in. So perhaps we'll do some videos on those as well if you're interested. But we've also got lots of other jobs to get on with in the garden. So keep watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what we do here on Murphy's Garden. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.